Wow! Yeah, what? <laughs> well, it truly is in the eye or the ear of the beholder. But other than that, I can't say what it is because I think art is perceptive to whoever's looking or listening. Yes, deep. That is deep. <laughs> what have you got here? <laughs> <laughs> and it's got Velcro so I can change the beard all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be art. art. You are art. Art. I am art. Art is a cultural thing, okay? Why do we do it? Because we're human. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we love it. And we love we it. We love it. <laughs> what, does art, what does art mean to you, Sean? Oh, art is, is the uh, essence of our society. I, I just believe that art uh, is the foundation stone upon which our culture is, is built. Um, and without art, uh, we, we are a, a, an aimless, numberless society. Do you think Does this is art, that? sir? I think this is art, definitely. Well, what, and this, without it, this, our, our society will fail? I would, it's bearer. <laughs> a lot bearer. Bearer. <laughs> Is. I heard it uh, in a couple different versions. I like the humor in it. I like I like where it actually kind of brings back a little bit of humility, as Honest Ed used to say. <laughs> in our teachings, you had to have a little bit of that in order to maybe fit into this larger picture. And I think art might be the in a, in a. Some of the writings I speak of it almost like as, as where the rubber hits the road. And so I basically f photocopied out the bus template and did my old cut and paste trick to it and made the model. I, maquettes are really interesting as a sculptor because you get to see scale actually too, like what this would look like, say maybe from a mile away. <laughs> but it's just at the end of the table. Who knows, we may inspire some ideas. Yeah. Well, the next time there's a, the next time we run the competition, I think you'll find that it'll become increasingly competitive. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. and yeah. The, the paper craft as well will just yeah. sort of be like, yeah. this yeah. is it's how you make a maquette. Extra PR piece. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I like that. Mm -hmm. And it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny what a difference that made in the uh, yeah. jury process, mm -hmm. seeing the maquette. Yeah, the maquette came out and everyone just, oh, oh. Right. <laughs> now we get exactly. it. That's a bus, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. But I think Rob did a really good job as well of uh, figuring out how to make the back and the front work. Yeah, that must have taken quite a lot of um, fiddling to, mm. to make it work and make it flow the way it does. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, 
It was a lot of hours. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that it will be absolutely spectacular to yeah. see it yeah. and to see the painting mm-hmm. yeah. at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The impact is that it's life-sized. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you look at something and it's one dimensional on a piece of paper, and I say that to a lot of the, you know, the clients well, just wait until this person is ten feet tall. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> you remember know? you saying that at the preliminary meeting where you said, you know, be careful what you put on because if you put on a person's face and it's, it's life size, yeah. you know, you can see every pore. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, and buses are bigger than most billboards. So. Yeah. Yeah. Moving billboard, that's how I sell it. <laughs> yeah. Now we're restricted to one area. Well, and the fact that it's going to go out on every bus route, it's not limited it's to any one bus route, makes it really good. So every part of the city gets a chance to see it. Very high exposure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The bus actually came from uh, an, an old story about the portage. As, as, a, as a top of the bus, I guess, being the, the big loon, the shimong comes from shimong, chimong being a big loon. So to pull the rest of that story out, the red canoe that uh, is kind of our, our local Stony Lake petroglyph, the flying canoe, the solar boat, it's been called a, a couple different things and it has all kinds of stories connected with it, but I tried to update it a little and put the four colors from the medicine wheel in it, in the head of each. That's where, that's where the glue is or that's where the contact is. I think it's in the image. And if the image is connected to the story, it, I think it's, it's probably just a form of storytelling. That, if that is a, an approach that people are taking with the work, I hope to back right off from that and point them back to where the source is. Not so much what this version is, but if you, if you like this stuff and you enjoy it, then go back to the source, which is right up the road. You don't have to own the cottage. You don't have to put in the causeway. You don't have to uh, possess it. You can just come see it. SVP, look, you. your buddy. She's funny. She likes them too, eh? I think she thinks it's a little kid. <laughs> hey, look. Yeah, look. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> You're funny. So what does art mean to you? Oh, art's my life. I made stained glass for 30 years until wow. I started doing this. So cool. for me, it's just all part of the daily beauty of life. Art, That's paintings, awesome. glass, anything. Oh, even this stuff is art. That's awesome. This is art. I see art every day walking down the street. You know, attitude, creativeness, just the people that come in my store all day, the difference in everybody, it's beautiful. It's not nature. It's not, people talk about found art, but I don't think God creates art. That When I look at the ocean, I get a different feeling that's on it. So it's made by humans. And I think to some extent it has to be made deliberately by humans not by accident maybe, and not by machines or at least not only by machines, so not mass produced. I know there's the whole Warhol mass produce art, but I think a human has to create it, um, and yes, with technologies, but the human has to make it, and then the human has to identify it as art. And of course from there, it's the eyes of the beholder, it's like beauty of a person who calls it art after they've seen it, then it necessarily becomes that, I think it becomes imbued with something, you know, as a result of that gaze of the human acknowledgement, even if it's one person or or a culture. Sometimes the culture is a commercial culture, you know, sometimes there's, clearly there's money involved in the marketplace, but when people um, invest meaning in it and call it art, then, then there it is. I believe art is defined by artists, so in a way, I think that these days it's understood by the people who do it. Maybe that's always been true. And I suppose that avoids the risk of having this purely commercial argument about what art is. If it's left in the hands of the people who are doing it, who call themselves artists, then um, 
perhaps it maintains some kind of ongoing legitimacy. You know, if it's just... So in that sense, in that sense, I think inherently art is kind of elitist. And that's partly why I think a lot of what's understood to be art is kind of messed up. Wow, it is, I didn't know I said that. So, um, it is seen as kind of a privileged practice in our society. And it's not good enough to say, oh, everything's art. Because if everything's art, then that makes art meaningless, and no one wants that to be true. Art's got to be special, and that's fine. But then if art is special, then the people who make the art, the artists, are special. And then in a society which is built on power relations or whatever, inevitably, those people have a kind of privileged status in terms of what their take on, on the world is. And I don't think there's really any way out of that. I don't necessarily like or even agree with it, but I think it's a fact. And I I'm think it's- I'm gonna pause it, should I just press yeah. stop? Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm kind of pleasantly surprised, actually. Like, I don't, I now recall it vaguely, right? How long ago was this, six years ago? Yeah. Um, I don't really disagree with it, but, and I do remember having those sort of, fer those fairly strong views. I think it was a kind of a phase or a time in my life. I do still relate to it somewhat, but I don't feel as strongly as I did then. So I don't know if it's being older now, I just have mellowed a bit. But I was, I'm surprised by sort of the authority that I speak about these things, you know? It's like I seem to have, have some, um, a, you know, fairly well thought of opinions that I Art is the theater, and uh, for myself, that means um, a way to convey our stories and bring them to life. Um, it doesn't have to be a stage; it could be a bush that's been cleared, or a beachfront, or. But we try to uh, convey anything that exists in life in our known world through the language, as a way of retaining it and passing it on to young people. Is uh, is what the art is all about. We do it in um, any discipline, so because we have song in our culture, we have the drum in our culture, we have all kinds of instruments, we try to get inspired by both old songs and uh, contemporary ways of, of creating brand new, new things. So what we do is we try to bring in experienced uh, artists who can see the vision and help us with their skills. So there's bits of Anishinaabe, there's sound like vocalizations. Yep, there's as English, there's French, and there's Anishinaabe. Mm. There's a little bit of a background to why we're calling him Whiskey Jack, mm. and it has to do with the cultural um, teaching that those stories were told after the first snowfall. So we've had a frost the other day, so oh, we, can, oh, <laughs> we okay. can talk about oh. that. Much. But at the time of our creation, our script workshops for the past three years, sometimes it would happen in the summer. And because we were working with cultural advisors, especially Edna Manitowabe, she's been a great auntie, a traditional teacher to a lot of us women and a lot of us people um, about the Anishinaabe culture. So 
So hast thou which art but air. So he's talking about to Ariel because Ariel's just an ethereal spirit. Okay. So you're talking to this like spirit that's your servant, and you're just kind of telling him like you're telling him telling him off because he's okay. trying to give you lip. So hast hast air which art but but air a touch of feeling of their afflictions and shall not myself one of their kind that relish all as sharply passion as they be kindlier kindlier move it thou art art you know what oh that's pretty yeah, hard to read that was now. yeah but that was really good jimmy you Thank actually you. like honestly you you got right it's 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 honestly what it, what it is it's, it's about the performance it's about taking on the character which you did immediately right which yeah. means you're obviously a naturally born actor but right. i'm sure you know our yeah. little friend can attest to that <laughs> <laughs> She's pretty smart. She sure knows that this is a puppet, doesn't she? How old are they, mommy? Oh my gosh! Soon you can say two years. I, I visited this one baby, the baby screamed earlier. It was so sad. I felt so sad. If they sad. scream in the middle no. of the night, I'm going to blame you. You'll blame you. <laughs> she likes it. She's like, if I don't move, he won't see me. Aww. <laughs> Art, art's a beautiful thing. It's, it's expression of the soul. Like we, we have a tool um, that gives us the ability to share with other people what we're thinking without using words. Uh, it, it's it's a profound thing, and we don't see it in any other creature on this planet. I mean, we appreciate it from other. That's creatures, right. No but... other. No other. Uh, uh, it's only only done by humans, and it's very important to do. It is. I, I think it's, it's like... expression art, one's soul. We wouldn't have culture without art. Art art is the embodiment of culture. And art imitates life sometimes. Yeah, and life imitates art. <laughs> do you find you're, there's some art in, in, in the chocolate that you do? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I use everything I can in my kitchen to turn into uh, this alchemic, alchemical equation that I make with chocolate. Chocolate is the ultimate alchemy. And to me, that's the art because it's something that you take from nature and you reform it and redefine it, and, and it changes you at the same time. So, mm. to me, that's art. If art changes you, wow. I mean, if anything you do changes you, it's got to be some some profound thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And it's important to the soul. It's it important. Is. It is the soul. Yeah.